Are we approaching a program turning season or are the Miami Hurricanes still going to be stuck in quicksand? You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen to the everydayers. We are free, available wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Let's bring in, it's not a truth teller Tuesday, but it's a truth teller Wednesday today. The man, the myth, the legend, Bruce Warner is with us. Bruce, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm all excited about this season. You know, we spent five or six months with me being Mr. Misery to a lot of our listeners and the people that are viewing this. Last week, I got a ton of positive comments, did. which makes me feel good. And um, now I'm really excited about this. But, you know, your, your opening quote rings true. It came from you, by the way, that opening quote. Bruce fed oh. that to me. Well, whatever I did, but the point is, is that this is a big year because if we're six and six again and five and seven, we'll never be five and seven. I don't think even seven and five is not so great. You know, we can lose some of these guys. We have to win at least eight games, have to, which would mean we beat everybody except maybe the four big games. I don't want that to happen. And we've talked about it and we'll talk about it for the next four or five weeks. We must beat Texas A&M. I know it's not an ACC game. I don't care. That's the biggest game of the year. We lose that game. I can't even imagine what could happen. We win that game. We have, should win the next three. We could be 5-0. and oh. And You know what? I'll take my chances. That's. Yeah. I just want to see them beat this team at home and then go from there. Yeah, I appeared, uh, I think the episode comes out today on Locked on ACC. You know, I was, uh, they had every ACC host on to kind of give a season preview. And they asked me, what's a date you have circled on the schedule? It's not the easiest of answers because Miami's got a lot of big games on the schedule this year. But I said the same one you did, Bruce. I said, I've got Texas A&M circled on my schedule just based on when that game is going to be played. It's the first true test an opponent Miami's going to have this coming year. We're going to know a lot about where things are going to trend, depending on what happens in that game. That can either be the type of thing that can build momentum and define the rest of your season in a good way, or yes. like you said, can't yeah. even imagine what happens if you don't win that game or, and God forbid, have, you get blown out. Right. We could have beaten them last year with the crappy yeah. team we had. Yeah. But we didn't. Now, I don't know much better or worse a and is. I haven't really seen much about them. I know they have their quarterback back, and they have they – have, um, they're pretty good, but they weren't they weren't so good last year. No, they weren't. The big game for Jimbo Fisher, too. They should be better. We should be better. We both should be better. Right. And let's see what happens. If we win that game, I think that's the springboard for the entire season. It's certainly a confidence booster. It shuts the fans up, including me, because I am a fan, no matter how close I am. And it's, it's, it's just it's, it's a must-win game. So let's get going, because – Practice started yesterday, and um, what's ask me what you want. Yeah, well, and, and real quick, I, I do want to note that uh, with practice going on today, second practice on Wednesday, uh, Tyler Van Dyke has hit some big throws in quarterback wide receiver drills because I, you know, I was at the first practice, did a post episode recap on it. Like, I didn't have anything bad to say about the quarterbacks, but I did say that, like, none of them really stood out. There were some ups and downs, but Van Dyke is looking good today on Wednesday, which is great. Uh, and I don't know, maybe the quarterbacks and Van Dyke is your answer to this, Bruce. Uh, is there a position group right now heading into this season on the Miami Hurricanes that you worry about least, where you think, okay, we're good here. I don't have to worry about these guys. Any position group that checks off that box for you? Well, I could make it easy for you and say the, the one I'm scared about the most is the quarterbacks mm -hmm. because I don't know what happens if Van Dyke is coming. I don't care what they say about your and I don't. The kid is a kid. He's a kid. That bothers me because we saw what happened um, last year, and it's a disaster. Now, I'm sorry, but I don't know how much Brown could improve from November, December until now we're in August. I don't know. I haven't seen. I saw him in the spring game. Scared the hell out of me. Yeah. I mean, I did see him live on the practice field. He was pretty good. But, you know, people are going to play a different defense against him. 
They've seen him. Um, they're going to make him throw the damn ball. I know that. So that's my concern area. My least concern area, probably the offensive line. Believe I love it or that. not. Yeah. Probably the offensive line. I know they're six or seven deep. They should be okay. I mean, to me, they're bringing the transfers and they got five stars and they have, you know, I hope Nelson plays, Rivers plays, you know, so I think we'll be, and, and that's Cooper. That's six or seven right there. So I, I, that's my least concern. It's hard to believe, but it's true. You know, you I don't worry about the other positions. There's things to think about. Maybe you that would be wide receiver. They seem to be pretty good. Yeah. Well, I'll give you mine. Um, and I not that I don't agree with you on the offensive line. I feel pretty good about that, given the way they're transforming that group. But um, I get more and more bullish on the tight end room. And, you know, they did lose production from Will Mallory last year. But here's the thing with me, Bruce. Um, over the summer, you know, I was a little bit cautiously optimistic about the tight ends because I, I wasn't 100% sure how Elijah Arroyo is doing. He is fine. He's better than fine. This guy had, you know, an ACL early in the season last year, recovered ahead of schedule, um, and is a full go. I was watching him in practice on Tuesday. He was one of uh, the more impressive players that I watched out there. Arroyo looks fantastic. Very well-rounded tight end because he's got great hands, great route runner, tall. Uh, he could also inline block really well. And the reason why I'm so bullish on the entire tight end group is Jaleel Skinner is a very gifted pass catcher. You know, last year he looked more like kind of a jumbo wide receiver, but he's added some mass to his body. Saw him in person the other day, and he told me he's really working on his inline blocking. I think he could be a star in the making. And they got the grizzled veteran, the guy who's been playing since the leather helmet days, Cam yeah. McCormick. They bring him into the mix, yeah. who's really going to help you, you know, in, in protection and run blocking and all that good stuff. And then I think, uh, you know, you have the luxury of not having to force it with the true freshman because Riley Williams and Jackson Carver, super talented. They may get on the field a little bit, but I, I think that tight end to me is a position where you almost have an embarrassment of riches. I think that group is going to be great this year. Well, I'm, I'm going to be a little more pessimistic about that. Has, has Arroyo taken any hits on his knee? No. No. I don't know what's going to happen. But to me, he's the entire package. He's everything. And if they miss him, I don't care about McCormick. I don't care about Skinner. I saw Skinner. He's, he, he got bigger. He got stronger. He's catching the ball much better because I saw that when I was there too. But it worries me that each one of those other players has a, an individualized skill. Arroyo has the whole package. So if he gets hurt, that negates one of Van Dyke's options. And I don't want – if that happens, we're in trouble again. So I'm not as optimistic as you are, but I'm optimistic that he's healthier. I just, you know, he's got to take a couple of hits to make sure he's mentally okay. We're here with Bruce Warner, the truth teller. Let's talk when we come back about all the changes. 45 new scholarship players, more than half the assistant coaches are different from last year. Alex? <laughs> uh, listen, man, uh, we got about another 20 minutes. We'll okay. see how much ground we can cover here. And we are only getting started here on Locked on Canes. I'm only getting started on LinkedIn jobs. Guys, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. I'm not a small business owner, but I know this works because I've been on the other side of it. I've gotten jobs as an employee through LinkedIn Jobs before. I know this thing works. You add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. And then simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. Alex Dono alongside the truth teller Bruce Warner. And for the everydayers, you know we're going to be busy the rest of the week uh, covering week one of fall practice. And if you want to take your everydayer experience to the next level, join our exclusive SMS texting community 
through subtext. I include a link in the show description below. I send you guys SMS texts directly from my phone to yours with show previews, breaking news, practice updates, recruiting scoops, one-on-ones. You can ask me questions on there. Uh, you can sign up and try it free for 14 days with the link below. And then if you like it, opt in and it's $4.99 a month. We give you a lot of added value on there. Uh, so, you know, Bruce, when I, you know, I'm, a lot of people have been asking me kind of my outlook on the season coming up and my concerns. And we'll talk maybe a little bit more about some of the position groups where we have question marks. But I, I think the biggest picture, and this is not necessarily a concern, but it's definitely a question mark. OK, yeah. um, are you going to be able to find chemistry quickly when you have so many new players and so many new position coaches and two new coordinators? I believe the changes that Mario Cristobal made are largely positive, right? I think a lot of the players that are no longer in Miami are probably yeah. better fits elsewhere. And a lot of the players you brought in are bigger, stronger, and they have the attitudes you need. Same right. thing with the coaches, but it's a lot of moving parts, Bruce. How concerned are you that they can find that chemistry? What did I tell you the first or second week? I told you that Leon kept on telling me, and he you had him on the show about – yeah about everybody being on the same page. It's, it applies to every position on the field. So do I think that could be a problem? It could be a problem. It could be a problem in the A&M game or some of the big games. Um, but I know one thing, and I you see it as well. This team is focused. This team is busting their ass to improve, to get bigger, stronger, faster. Mario has their attention. We all know that. So now it's up to the coaching staff, which is also new. Mm-hmm to get these guys to perform and do what they're supposed to do. So I'm guessing that they'll simplify some things in fall practice against um, Miami of Ohio, but all hell breaks loose against AM. and That team is going to be so jacked up for that game. We're all going to be jacked up for that game. Not only is it a big game, but everybody hates Jimbo Fisher anyhow. So, <laughs> uh, you know, going back to the Florida State game. So yeah. I, I think that that's a Big ass game for us. I do have worries. I'm worried about the secondary because if you don't have four locked in starters, but you have 12 guys, then what do you really have? That's like saying we have three quarterbacks, but you don't have anybody who's really the. It doesn't matter. I want to see these guys gel. I want them to pick their their top guys and let these kids play. I don't know who it's going to be yet. I heard Richards had a pick. So he looked, he looked really, and again, there no pads yeah, are not well, even on, but he looked really good yesterday. Yeah, and he's not a little guy either. He's he's no. got some size on yeah, him. Yeah, he's six two, about two hundred pounds. He's right. and, and that's and I'm I'm actually I'm really glad you brought up the secondary because that was something I wanted to get back into because I think the defensive secondary, especially the corners, because like you have a pretty good idea who your top two safeties are going to be. Right. You know, James has got to step up, of course, and be consistent this year. Uh, but I look at the corners and I think. That room has got a very high ceiling, but yeah. potentially a very low floor, right? Uh, and it was nice to see, you mentioned Jadias Richard, who I thought day one of fall practice, uh, I, I thought was the most outstanding player. This guy really popped. He was batting down passes. He made a great interception against Tyler Van Dyke. That was nice to see. There's a lot of internal buzz about uh, Jaden Davis, who Miami got as a transfer from Oklahoma. He'll probably be the nickel, uh, you know, not... He could play outside, but he'll probably be a nickel at Miami. Devontae Brown had a really good spring. He'll probably be a starter. You know, oh, Daryl yeah. Porter had a good spring, but he wasn't competing with guys like Jadias Richard, oh. who's who's now in the building, and Demetrius Freeney. So there's a lot of potential in that room, Bruce, but it's it's high ceiling, low floor. We, we got to see that potential get realized. Right, and then for the DBs, and this, including the safeties, the pressure that they're going to dial up with Lance Gidry's defense, because he's going to switch, and everybody keeps saying they're going after quarterbacks. That's the key, because we, no matter whether he changes things up or he does what Jimmy did and Dennis did with the front four, and he just closed his eyes say, get the quarterback, and that's what happened. So, you know, it's different now. I don't know about this defensive front. So whatever they do in the front seven will affect the DB. So the whole thing has to work as a unit, and they're all learning this. So – yeah, there'll be some mistakes. They'll get beat here and there. But overall, if this defense is going after the quarterback and, and flushing him out of the pocket, and these guys are not missing tackles like they've been, you know, 
Again, we've talked about tackling all the last two years. It's been horrible. Well, that's another thing. Let's see how they tackle. So, yeah. but I, I, I listen, I'm all excited about this entire team. You asked me about the changes individually. I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of these guys play. You haven't either. They played at other schools. Right. But I'm excited about what, what's on the floor and who he's brought in. I'm excited about the coaches way more than last year. And so uh, I'm looking forward to a, a, a damn good season. I can't predict records because nobody knows. But I'm not counting them out of any game. They could beat anybody. If, they're, if the offense, I did say that a long time ago, if Zion comes back or if the offensive line works, they're going to score 35 and 40 points a game. And I still believe that. Or more. Yeah, I think this season to me, because um, I know every Hurricanes fan will say, hey, like the destination, where we want to get to. Some think they could get there this year. I don't. But some people, you know, you, you got to get to that college football playoff. You got to win the ACC for as much longer as there is an ACC. We got to get back to national prominence. Um, I, I don't believe that's going to happen this year, but I believe this year is about getting from point A to point B before you can get to point C. Like point A was last year that abomination of a five and seven season point b hopefully is eight wins plus this year bruce and laying the foundations and then a year or two down the road we can start talking about point c and i don't want anyone to think oh this guy's making excuses listen to his low expectations i'm being real here like uh how, how disingenuous would i be bruce and i know you'd never do this either if i come on here and say oh yeah 11 12 games will compete for a national title like some of you want to hear that, but I, I don't want to sit here and lie to you. I, I got to try to be a truth teller when I'm sitting next to the truth teller here. <laughs> but you know what I want to see? And I think everybody watching and listening wants to see. I want to see us beat the daylights out of Georgia Tech, kick Duke's ass, yeah. you know, Virginia Tech, Virginia, kick their ass. I don't want any of yeah. these close games where he hits the crossbar and he misses the field goal like two years ago. I don't want to stick of that. Let's just kick their ass and get ready for the big game. That's Miami football. Yeah. I want to beat Miami of Ohio. I want to beat AM, whoever else we play. And then when we get into the big games, we'll see where we where we are in terms of going forward. I'm not worried about winning the ACC. I expect it to be Clemson and Florida State. I'm not worried about the playoffs. We're not going to be there, but I am worrying about winning nine games. That's my goal. Nine games, a bowl game a win in a ball game to win 10 games this season. And then I expect all these kids that are on the cusp of coming to Miami, I expect the majority of them to be here. Because yeah. they'll know, because you know and I know, and the fans know, that ESPN, it's a love-hate with Miami. But if Miami's turning the corner and they're coming back, the buzz is all over the country, not just in Coral Gables. The whole country either loves or hates Miami. They don't give a damn about the Gators. And they, they to a certain extent, maybe Florida State, but it's about Miami. That's who the country likes to love or hate. And if we're back, that's it. I expect Mario to clean up next year and recruit him. When we come back, I want to take the temperature on the defensive line. That's probably the group that Bruce and I have discussed the most for the right. past several months since we've been doing these truth teller sessions. So you want to keep it locked right here on Locked on Canes. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Become an everydayer. Man, we're here every single day, weekends usually as well, sometimes multiple episodes per day. We had three yesterday. We had like five the day before. I haven't slept in like a month. We're here <laughs> providing content for you on Locked on Canes, so become an everydayer and stick with us every single day. Uh, so, Bruce, have, uh, have your opinions evolved or changed at all? On uh, on the defensive line, and I know like when at this time of year, when you're watching guys in in shorts, um, you know, it's tougher to gauge the line of scrimmage. It is, right. but at the same time, um, reports about guys having positive off seasons. Branson Dean, my my hunch is Dean is probably going to end up starting next to Leonard Taylor. He's still right. got to earn that. Uh, I was really impressed with Ahmad Moten, who I talked to at Media Day, you know, because, Bruce, we always talk about, hey, where are the 300-pounders? Moten yeah. is like, you know, he's 6'3", 6'4", 317, 320 pounds, so he fits that bill. He, he's a guy that may get more playing time this year. And Joshua Horton, the incoming true freshman, he's up to 300 pounds now, and he looks really lean. Like, this is not a baby fat 300 pounds. This this guy looks like he's carved out of stone. So, at defensive tackle, I'm, I'm getting to a point where I feel better now than I felt 
few weeks ago, a couple months ago. Did you see Leonard Taylor out there? I did. He looks, I mean, he always looks good. At LT, he always looks good, man. And, and I, you know, I feel like he was criminally underused last year. Well, yeah, because it was inconsistent. Yeah. And he has to work on that. So I think I like the line. I like, I think it's much better in, in conjunction with what I'm hearing about Gidry's defense and being aggressive and attacking. Now, if it was the typical 4-3, I don't think they have enough bulk up front. But that's not what they're doing. Right. It's kind of like what Jimmy did and what Dennis did and Butch did, which is go after the quarterback, just get up the field and get in there and so and disrupt. And I think they have disruptors. So I'm, ex I, I'm excited about it. I don't want to see eight or nine guys rotating because that means you really don't know who's in there and who's not in there because there was a drop-off. So I, I think as long as they're physical and aggressive and attacking, they will make the other quarterbacks very nervous. And that's what that's what Gidry wants. He wants these guys to be thinking in that pocket. Uh oh, you know, just like last year when Van Dyke was in the pocket, he knew as soon as the ball was snapped, oh, I, I, I got to do something fast because I'm going to get killed, and he did. Yeah. So you know, I, I think we're going to be, and I think our offensive line in practices and scrimmages, which is improved, will help the defensive line. They're not they're not scrimmaging against bums or, or, or injured guys or guys yeah. that could barely walk. So to me, that's critical because back in the day, our offensive line had to go against Sapp and Cortez and Russell and all these guys, and it made them better. You heard them say it. It made them better. So I think that's an important aspect that no one's really thought about. That offensive line improvement is going to help our defense. I, I, that's a great point. Um, you know, I was talking with, at media day with one of Miami's linebackers. I think it was K.J. Cloyd who told me this, that something he likes about Gidry's defense and how it confuses quarterbacks is um, Gidry, his defense is you're scheming against players, not against the opposing coordinator. So All it's right. like, you know, you're, you're going up mano e mano against 11 guys on the other side. And if you can confuse, sometimes it's more effective to try to confuse the player in front of you right. than it is the coach, you know, in the other booth or on the other sideline. I thought that was kind of an interesting take. I think it was Cloyd who told me that it was in one of my media day interviews, but I thought that that made a lot of sense, yeah, right? Because yeah. they're going to, they're going to identify the weak link on the offensive line. You're going to go after right. that guy. Exactly. And if they get past him, they're in the backfield. And right. once the quarterback is running for his life, you can't have any more missed tackles. This, I mean, we will. But you know what you know what I'm saying. They got to contain these guys and crush them. Yeah. And so that makes everybody's job easier. So I, I look. I don't think anybody's allowed at these at these um these these scrimmages. They're going to have a few scrimmages. Yeah. The first one is going to be a week from Saturday. Right. Um. I in they've historically they've been, they've been closed. I don't know 100 percent certain if they're going to be closed to the media, but that that's usually what happens. So I think on Saturday, what would it be? August 12th, I believe, is going to be the first scrimmage. Yeah. And um, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get there because if they're letting the former players in, I might be able to get in. But yeah, you um, got to get in there. You got to be I, my eyes and ears in there. Yeah, I want to get in there, but you know, I'll figure it out. We'll we'll, we'll do it. But I, look, overall, it's the beginning of what I believe is the turnaround of this program. I'm not looking at it like the quicksand, which is like the comment I made. I'm looking yeah. at what is the turnaround here. This is critical. And if we could win these close games, if we could stay in the big games and not get blown out. And make it exciting because it was not exciting last year. It was horrible to watch. Yeah, it was. It really was. What was the best game we played last year? Probably uh Georgia Tech game, I thought was the best we overall. Didn't, performance. We didn't beat anybody, did we? No, we didn't. We didn't. I'm just saying, like, like the the George, like I the old I did all the post game shows last year. Yeah. I did 12 post game shows, and the only post game show where I was like, okay, they were playing football today <laughs> was against a bad Georgia Tech team. For, right. Yeah, or, that was or the game and lost because we could have won that game. We were in the game, but we didn't do anything. Our yeah. and our red zone right. offense. That was the beginning of the end, as far as I'm concerned, with Gaddis. That was horrible. Yeah. So I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I love doing the shows with you. I so love it. you know, and it's it's just fun for me. I really I really enjoy this, and I, I hope the fans appreciate what I try to bring. Um, I try to bring what I believe is the truth and I try to tell my true feelings and not just talk about all positives or be negative. I'm not negative. 
But I look, it, it's very hard to, I think it's hard to disagree with what I'm saying on certain things because yeah. nobody knows. Right. I don't even think Mario knows what's going to happen. I know he's got, he's, he's done his best. He's, he's got everything he wants. He didn't get everybody he really wanted. And we're still not out of the woods yet with the recruiting. But I think this is going to be nothing less than eight and four, nothing less than eight and four. Definitely a bowl game and a marked improvement on this entire roster. The entire now, the only thing that may concern me is the punter. Mm. He's punted before. He's Australian. He'll be fine. Okay. Well, I was out there. I don't think he was here, but I was out there for a practice. The kid, so whoever was punting, was punting twenty-five yards straight up in the air, and that was the end of it. It was see not- that that might have been the other guy because yeah. they've got the uh, the the backup punter, and it's obviously it's hard to tell the right. difference when they're not wearing the names on the backs, but. I can remember that from the spring game because there were a couple shanks in the spring game and people were freaking out, but it was the other guy. It right, wasn't right, it right, wasn't right, Joyce. I got right. I got yeah. it. Okay. Anyway, great seeing you again. I love doing Appreciate the show. You. I hope I get some more positive feedback, but I am positive. I'm very upbeat. I'm very excited. I just want to see some good old fashioned Miami Hurricane ass kicking. That's what I want. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah, huge, huge thank you to, to Bruce Warner, the truth teller. Thanks to everyone who took time out of your day or your evening to watch and listen to Locked on Canes, available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. And we will talk to you again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.